Hello. Hi. Hi. So let's stay on the, the character topic because I want to know how you get into the character when you're about to record. I mean, you're being chased by, my, you know, big dinosaurs and stuff. How do you get into character to, to voice that? Yeah, you start with a lot of tea. <laughs> you, get, you have to get a lot of tea, a lot of throat coat tea, chamomile tea, peppermint tea to get ready to, for all the screaming that you're about to do. Guarantee every episode you're screaming like crazy. And it's actually a joke when we get to go, oh, we don't, we're not screaming in this scene. Okay, that's nice. Or, oh, we're not running. Woo, great, because I forgot to stretch this morning. It's quite funny to be in a booth all by yourself right now during quarantine when we're, you know, sort of separated and recording in our own booth. Um, I have to warn my family, you know, like, hold the dog back. I'm about to start screaming in like two scenes, so nothing's happening. It's just me by myself in my living room running from dinosaurs that I don't actually see. Um, <laughs> Are you recording from home through this too? Yes, yes. I'm in my living room. This is my recording booth right now, actually. It's made out of PVC pipe and furniture moving blankets. And we literally just built it in the corner of our living room. Um, and I'm in Texas right now. So I was able to record uh, a lot of season three here. So it was really fun to scream in the middle of nowhere in my living room and just kind of, you know, like I said, I tell my family, either y'all can leave or y'all can stay, but I will be screaming and heavy breathing for most of it. You just got to like uh, work on your breathing exercises to get through it all. <laughs> yeah. And I think that um, before quarantine, I was, I had always, like Randy was saying, I had always had to get tea before I went into a session because I knew I was going to be screaming and breathing and <laughs> all of this crazy stuff. To the point where one of the recording places that we went to, they're like, hey, do you want the usual? And I'm like, wait, what's the usual? <laughs> and they're like, oh, what you always get, you know, peppermint throat coat tea. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know there was a usual. <laughs> hey, <yeah." laughs> so it's like getting into characters definitely, um, it's a crazy process because, you know, you never run from dinosaurs in real life. I mean, not that I know of, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but um yeah, and I definitely feel like getting into character is really fun too, because on top of like this screaming and yelling, there's also like you also get the sense of camaraderie from all of the campers that are at uh that are at Jurassic World and um building those building those relationships is the most fun thing that I've ever done on this show. I mean, you were talking about the franchise and, and just being a part of it. And so many people from the movies was, is a part of this, right? From the original movies, Steven Spielberg. So that's yes. what I wanted to ask. Yes. Have you ever met him or got to work with him or get advice from him or anything like that? Oh my gosh. I, I remember uh, my mom is always telling me like, always dress right because you never know if Steven or somebody is going to be in the booth that day. <laughs> but um, I mean, I actually... I don't entirely know specifically because my mom, uh, back when we were recording in the booth, my mom was actually telling me about how I was like walking into the booth and I was passing all of these famous people like Tom Kenny and all of these like crazy voice actors. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, it was insane. Cause like this one time I sat down and I was sitting next to Frank Welker and I had no idea who he was. And for those who don't know who Frank Welker is, he's the voice of, you know, Scooby-Doo, Curious George, all these crazy, like, shows. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I might have seen him, but I, I wouldn't remember. <laughs> I, I would know if Steven Spielberg was in my booth, and he was not. <laughs> uh, he has not been yet. Steven, if you're watching this, please come visit us when we're recording. <laughs> Um, we would incredibly be so grateful if you could just come see us in person. Huge fans. Love what you've done with the franchise. Thank you for hiring us. Big fan. Um, no, it, it is. And surprise, he's here. No. Amanda's <laughs> 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 like, I called some people. Steven's on his way. <laughs> 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 no, I, my mom tells me the same thing. She's always like, always, you know, dress appropriate. You never know who might be there. Um, you know, Steven could show up one day. Um, uh, we've definitely heard great feedback from his whole team and, and his whole department of, of just, you know, 
their love for the show and, and, you know, how exceeded expectations and they're so excited. And we love hearing that sort of thing and that motivation to, to get us excited about the show and whatnot. I mean, just the legendary names behind it by itself yeah. is, I mean, that's just one of the reasons why we are so excited to be a part of this show. Um, it's truly, truly special. And to have such iconic names behind this franchise is like, I, I mean, it's just wild. It, to me, it's just wild to be a part of this. Other than your own character, what characters would you choose to, or even your, your one of your favorites and, and why, because what qualities do they possess that make them that? Oof. I mean, having to pick our favorite characters other than ourselves is always so hard because it's like everyone brings such great qualities to their characters and they're, and I feel like everybody's character is so well-rounded um, and so just alive when it comes to watching what they do and how they move and how they think and talk um, at Camp Cretaceous. I, I personally, I love Darius. I love Paul's character. I think he is so smart and so kind and him being the youngest, I think it's so tough to come into a situation like he was where he was like very overly enthusiastic to come in and sort of get that environment where like, oh, maybe not everybody feels the same way that I do. But at the same time, he's so not afraid to just continue being his dino nerd self that everybody calls him. He's not afraid to showcase that. And I love that about him. I love the knowledge that he has about the jungle and the dinosaurs and Isla Nublar and Camp Cretaceous. I mean, he's sort of like, um, I feel like Darius is like the Jurassic fan at home. That's like, oh, I that's me, that's me, that's Darius. Is like, I feel like every fan that we I've ever met is like a Darius, where they know so much about the show in every way, shape, and form. Um, I would love to be uh, Sean's character Ben, just because of the of the whole character 180 he did from season one to season two, of being like scared, timid, shy Ben, and then being like super cool Ben that can defeat um dinosaurs. Um, of course, you know, being Yasmina would be super fun too, because that is so different from me of just her being like an introvert and very quiet and very, you know, thought, thought provoking and things like that. Um, I think it's always important to see things from other people's point of view, which is nice. And I love that relationship between Yaz and Sammy, how, you know, they're complete yin and yang, but yet they bring out the best in each other, which I think is really sweet. Also, it'd be really cool just to be a dinosaur in general, <laughs> just to, just to get to voice that as well. <laughs> Do they have that? Do they have people that are like, Rawr, like for the dinosaurs or? Um, well, our director, us. Yeah, our director <laughs> does it for us. Um, <laughs> our voice director will, will be the dinosaur for us when we're recording. Um, she'll go and then, you know, like in, in, in season one, she'll go, and then Tora walks up and action. And so <laughs> yeah. do for us. So yes, she will sometimes, sometimes Scott, um, our co-creator will come in and He'll be like, oh, yeah, so this dinosaur, guys, kind of sounds like this, or this dinosaur will look like, th let me show you, like, a sketch of what we're thinking for this dinosaur. So we'll get some inside scoop of that. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how they get the, the sounds for the dinosaurs, their, their voices, but uh, our director, Serena, will voice them for us. So that's always a treat. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, uh, Rainy, you've done, have they had you do uh, dinosaur noises on, on this show, too? Like, as Sammy doing noises? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I do like uh, dinosaur calls to like, like if we're doing a distraction of some sort, like some weird dinosaur noises. Um, or if I'm trying to like, um, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I think that's the only reason why I did them for like a distraction of some sort or like trying to get away from something else. I've had to do a couple of fun dinosaur noises and they sound strange every time. Uh, at one point, <laughs> at one point, one of my noises came out like a goat. Um, so I had to like, I was like, that does not sound right to me. Um, so it's just finding that balance of what animal am I channeling today for my inner dinosaur noise? Yeah, man, I always get embarrassed when somebody mentions like that, uh, that scene when we're on the, when we're on the zip line and I'm doing those dinosaur calls, I'm like, oh gosh, she sounds so terrible, <laughs> but it's also funny. Cause we're in our booths, like by ourselves or like or if we're recording in person, there's like six people behind the glass wall, like watching you, you know, yeah. like you're like, this feels silly. Is this right? Is this what you want? It always feels silly, especially even when you're by yourself and everybody's watching via Zoom, you feel very silly trying to make noises in your living room. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Well, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you.